Welcome back to our AFL Explained series. In this playlist, we break down key facets of the game, helping you transition from the casual footy fan to the resident expert of your friends or office. In this video, we break down the ruck. The ruck is one of the most important positions on the ground, as they are the first point of contact at the beginning of a sequence of play. Usually the tallest player in the team, modern day rucks clock in anywhere from just under 200 centimetres to ex-docker Aaron Sanderlands, who topped out at 211 centimetres. At centre bounces, they leap into the air and attempt to guide the ball to the advantage of a teammate, using a combination of long and short taps, depending on their team's stoppage setup. At centre bounces, the rucks start inside the centre circle and can only cross the halfway line once the ball leaves the umpire's hands. This leads to collisions in the air, and you will often see rucks being one of the few players on field to wear their socks pulled up, concealing a shin pad underneath, which they use to shield off their opponent while jumping. A perfect tap at a centre bounce can immediately release a teammate into space and create a forward entry, due to the room provided by the centre square. When a ruck wins the tap, it's known as a hit out, with taps that go to a teammate known as hitouts to advantage. To a degree, rucks are responsible for how a midfield sets up, and depending on who's winning the tap, the midfielders may alter how aggressively they position themselves. In more defensive situations, the midfielder might come closer, and the ruck will drop the ball at their feet to minimise risk or cause repeat stoppages to run down the clock. In attacking situations, they'll spread the midfield wider and seek to hit the ball out of congestion. The best rucks execute this with precision tap work and can hit the ball 360 degrees around the contest by changing the angle of their hand or adjusting their starting position. At stoppages around the ground, the rucks must stay one meter apart until again, the ball leaves the umpire's hand. At boundary throw-ins and ball ups, a ruck's tactics and personal attributes come into play. Some are more physical, others like to run and jump, and some are a combination of the two. From a defensive mindset, knowing your opponent's strengths is crucial for deciding what you should do in the contest. When facing a stronger opponent, it's crucial that you execute your positional strategy and bodywork. Rucks will seek to gain an advantage by digging their inside shoulder into their opponent's chest, giving them front position and a stable base, which protects you from an opponent's attempt to push you under the contest. It's best to protect the space in front and then come forwards depending on the depth of the throw. Another strategy is to stay mobile. If your opponent's best asset is their brute strength, then you know that they want to make contact. Staying on the move and starting from different angles can draw your opponent out of position and allow you to run and jump around or over the top of them. On the other hand, if you're being outjumped by a more agile opponent who likes to run and jump at the ball, then you need to disrupt their strategy in some way. Making contact to stop their jump is a good place to start, while interrupting running patterns and protecting the ball's drop zone are other effective ways to combat athletic rucks. All this, however, must be done within the laws that govern ruck contests. While attempting to win the tap, there is a strict set of rules the rucks must operate within, and it's for this reason that they feature highly in the free kicks for and against count. A field umpire shall award a free kick in a ruck contest against a player where they make prohibited contact, make contact with an opposition ruck prior to the football leaving the umpire's hand, the designated ruck steps outside the centre circle prior to the field umpire bouncing or throwing the ball up, hits the football out of bounds on the full from a ball up or throw in, unduly pushes or bumps their opponent, or holds and blocks an opposition ruck. These last two points can often be the hardest for an umpire to adjudicate, as rucks continuously grapple for front position. If the umpire feels the contact has been made while the ruck is going for the ball, they will often allow it whereas if they take their eyes off the ball and go only for their opponent, a free kick will be paid. Arms wrapped around an opponent and a tug of the jumper are two key things umpires look for in this regard. In addition, the AFL recently changed its rules to ban the third man up, 
and now it only allows one player from each team to compete in the ruck contest. This means that if the umpire is unsure who the team's rucks will be, they must nominate prior to the contest. If no one nominates in time, the team will not be eligible to go for the ball. Rucking is an extremely physically demanding ruck. When the tap is won or lost, the most dynamic rucks follow up the ball and apply tackling pressure at ground level. Good stamina is also necessary to ensure you can make it to all the ball ups and throw ins and fulfill other roles around the ground. Rucks usually set up down the line from the contest to provide intercept marking and often a designated target for a long kick in after a behind has been scored. Today, teams will rarely play more than two designated ruckmen in their list of 22, and it's common to play just one ruckman and have a tall forward rotate through the middle. In recent years, it hasn't been unheard of for a team to use just one ruck and deploy an extra midfielder when they're resting, most notably Richmond's use of Sean Gregg in 2017, essentially conceding the tap to the opposition, but having an extra rover at ground level. This has led to growing discussion on the impact of winning hitouts, and whether or not it really matters if your ruckman wins the tap. Realistically, it can depend on what your team's system is. If a high emphasis is placed on winning the clearances and gaining first use of the footy, then of course a good tap ruckman will give you a better chance of achieving this. But if your side prefers to rebound off half back, and you don't mind if you're not winning the clearances, then a ruckman who isn't as strong in the ball up but moves well around the ground may be preferred in some cases. So if you're watching your team's midfield run out of the centre with ease, or it seems like you always have an option down the ground, the hard work being put in by your ruckman could be one of the key reasons why. If you would like an area of AFL Explained, please leave your request in the comments below.